And welcome to this week in Jacksonville Business Edition. This podcast is going to focus on economic development in the River City and throughout our region. And today's topic is real estate. So right now, Diana Galavis, president of the Northeast Florida Association of Realtors. And the reason I reached out is because I saw a recent uh, news release from you guys saying, hey, we see a shift here. So it sounds like real estate, when we were talking uh, you know, the home buyers or commercial side or whatever, that maybe there's a shift happening. What are you seeing? Yeah, there is a slight shift in the market right now. We're seeing an influx of interest rates. Those are continuing to possibly go up. Um, and we're seeing our uh, home prices still um, high, but stabilizing where they're at right now. So the, this certainly, as a homeowner, you, you wonder about that or you're watching that. And uh, for most of us, when we see interest rates change, we're also looking at, wow, boy, it's been a great market and my, the value of my home has risen. How do those factor into whether more people are going to be able to purchase a home here in our area? That's a very good question because right now it is a very interesting market. So I'd like to say that it is still a seller's market, but buyers are in control right now. So with the interest rates going up just a little bit and we're seeing longer days on market, people are able to shop a little bit. They're able to take their time um, and not just jump on the first home that they might have saw private previously. So now we're seeing people, um, you know, taking their time, shopping a little bit more and um, making a decision that might be best fit for them. Well, Diana, one of the things that, that I hear, uh, especially on maybe even the educational side or the, the workforce development side here in our region, hey, if somebody comes to school here in Jacksonville or the area, we want them to stay here. We want them to live here. But it seems like it's been a little tough, especially since pandemic began, for folks who are newer in the workforce to say, yeah, I can afford to buy a home. Is that maybe changing? So our affordability, our affordability index yeah. is um, still low. Um, we'd like to see it a little um, higher than what it is so that people are able to work and live in the communities that they serve. So right now, we're just really trying to see what we can do to have the most affordable housing. But our, affordab our affordability index is just a little bit well, higher. And this is interesting. And again, I really love the news release here because it was educational. Uh, affordable housing housing index number combine some of the impacts here, I guess, of longer days on the market, lower percentage of the asking price received, and really that those are the kinds of things that you see throughout what six counties in our area that indicate maybe there's this shift toward a buyer's market. Uh, we are seeing a small shift, but again, the interest rates are really going to drive that. We don't know what the future is going to hold. So yeah. at this point in time, um, we're hopeful um, that they stabilize, but we just don't know right now. So uh, I appreciated looking at some of the, the details here. So county by county, uh, you're looking at some of this. And I know in Duval County, what you reported was September 23, the median price of the single family housing, $330,000. Not much of a change from the previous month but the number of days on the market in September increased, so up to 33, so a full month that uh, a home or a property is on the market. And I guess what, again, you're the expert here, so you gotta help, help me understand this, but it seems like the longer it's on the market, does that, again, is that an indication that maybe there's a shift that, uh, as you put it, buyers are in control? Well, buyers are able to shop a little bit longer than they previously were. Days on market is an indication that um, our market is potentially stabilizing. But like I mentioned, it's all about the interest rates right now. You know, we don't know what that's going to hold. We're going into an election year next year. Yeah. So um, that all is going to play into the, you know, factors of where we're going to be. Yeah, often people, especially toward the, the final quarter of the year when it comes to finances, oh, what's going to happen next year or what's going to happen in light of an election? Uh, one of the things we've certainly seen on that national level with interest rates because of inflation, uh, the Federal Reserve has increased interest rates, you know, regularly in these last couple of years. They seem to have said, hey, we're probably going to put a stop to that. And we see inflation coming down a little bit. It seems reasonable to expect that those interest rates that are demanded on a mortgage might follow suit and might back off a little bit. Is that accurate? Well, that's our hope.
that's our hope right now. Um, again, um, this is the fourth quarter of the year. You know, um, the holidays are approaching very fast, and yeah. um, people are still putting their home on the market. But um, we're seeing some people say, you know what, maybe I'll just wait till next year in the spring selling season. Does it typically slow down that final quarter because of holidays and that sort of thing? Yes, it typically does. Um, but there are people still putting their home on the market because a fresh start for the new year is something that a lot of people like to do. So um, again, with the interest rates, we're just going to have to see what happens. So are, you're the, the association here, it's not just about uh, home ownership. This is uh, commercial properties, et cetera. Is that right? Absolutely. Is, is there a difference there between what homeowners might see and what uh, commercial property uh, values might do? So um, that that is really for a commercial expert. Um, we are on the residential side, okay. um, but you do see a correlation between the two of them. So people do move um, to an area because of all the development that's happening on the commercial side um, with businesses. So that is definitely um, a driver for people that come into our specific area. So much talk uh, the last year for sure, but uh, even beyond that, because of the uh, impressive growth in, in places like Clay or St. John's County. Uh, there's been discussion about, hey, what is affordable? Do we have affordable housing? Do we have housing that uh, someone who's going to work a, a job that isn't an exorbitant salary is going to be able to afford? What do you see in there when it comes to across our region? Yeah, so. Affordable housing is top of mind, you know. That's one of the things that the Northeast Florida Association of Realtors does is we advocate for affordable housing. We want people to be able to work mm -hmm. in the communities critical, and right? live where they serve. So that is something that um, one of the things that we did was the Hometown Heroes program um, for down payment assistance um, that is being used and um, more money is being put into it so that we can help people get into homes that are possibly more affordable for them. Yeah, getting, th there's something, um, th there's something in a person's self-esteem, being able to get into a home, even if it's a little bit of a stretch, but if it's completely unaffordable, then that's bad for the family or the individual and our economy across the board. Yeah, we typically see homeowners um, have higher net worth. Um, the children do better in school. Um, they take more pride in repairs of their homes, so the maintenance of the communities um, in their neighborhood is better. And all around, it is. It just it, it feels good to be able to be a homeowner. Uh, I wanted to give you a chance just to talk a little bit about uh, the association here. So as I was reading from the news release, uh, Northeast Florida Association of Realtors serving as the voice of real estate in Northeast Florida and largest professional association. You got 12,000 members, is that right? Yes, um, we have 12,000 plus Realtor members and affiliates. Um, we are the largest trade organization in Northeast wow. Florida. Um, very proud um, to be president this year and very thankful that we are able to do many good works um, and focus on community, driving affordable housing and doing um, um, really good stuff. Diana, before I, I let you go, uh, when we look at these numbers in other places, not just Duval County, I looked at St. John's, for instance, prices decreased two and a half percent month to month from September back to August. We look at Putnam and Baker and Nassau and all of that. In general, how do you feel about uh, where the housing market is for our region, especially as people continue moving into the state of Florida. And certainly uh, a lot of people say, hey, you might as well find um, the garden spot. You might as well come to Northeast Florida if you're moving to the Sunshine State. Well, I like to say that Northeast Florida is something very special, you know. We're not in Miami, we're not in Orlando, but we are where Florida works. So we have a lot of businesses um, that are moving into Northeast Florida, which helps with um, jobs. Um, it definitely helps with people wanting to move and relocate to somewhere that has beaches, that has great temperature, and overall just really great people. When I, my family and I, when we first moved to Northeast Florida, there was a, well, where are you going to look? Uh, where are you going to look to live? How far do you want to be from where you actually work and have to commute to? But there's also that component when you have children, uh, and where's a good school district? It seems like it would have to help everybody in the area when a place like Duval County Public Schools, their grades are rising when you already have the number one school district in the state in St. John's and you've got great stuff in Clay County. It seems like that is still a big component for home buyers to choose where they're going to live. 
No, it absolutely is because once you are in your area and you have settled down and you are growing a family, you want to make sure that the education is top notch where you live. Yeah. Well, are you excited about uh, what 2024 might look like, what the end of 2023 looks like for realtors? I am very excited. Um, I'm hopeful that we are going to be able to stabilize the interest rates just a bit um, and um, see about selling some homes. Yeah, it, it, it makes a difference, uh, as we just talked about, it makes a difference for uh, kind of everybody in the community uh, when things are good on that real estate side. Diana Galvez, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we are constantly working to try and bring you more interviews like this focused on economic growth in our region. Thanks for joining us for This Week in Jacksonville Business Edition.